all across the world exist ancient, massive stone structures known as megaliths. You're probably familiar with a few of these famous structures, such as Stonehenge in England and the Great Pyramids of Egypt. So today, we're going to introduce you to 10 megaliths you may not have heard of. Find out which one was created from stones that each weighed more than 8 full-grown elephants. Number 10. Chuncoit, England Situated on open moorland near Pendon and Cornwall, England, Chuncoit is the best preserved example of Neolithic dolmens in western Cornwall. And after consulting my encyclopedia, I learned that a dolmen is a massive, single-chambered stone tomb. Anyway, this one is believed to have been built around 2400 BCE and it sits in an area with many megalithic sites. The design is a closed chamber with a massive mushroom-domed capstone positioned on top. Unfortunately, little archaeological evidence has been found in the immediate vicinity, which has left archaeologists unsure of its exact function and intended design. However, they do believe that a dolmen is the most likely answer. As with many of the megalithic sites across the world, this one leaves you asking more questions than it provides answers for. Number 9. Petra Iffen Wells Located in Pembrokeshire Wells, the Petra Iffen Monument is the best preserved example of a Neolithic dolmen in Wells. Dating estimated at 3500 BCE, nearly 1000 years older than the one in Cornwall, all that remains of this site today is seven principal stones, the largest measuring 16 feet long, 8 feet wide, and 3 feet thick. And it might weigh up to 16 tons! A considerable weight considering it rests on the tips of other erect stones. The site has traditionally been identified as a communal burial, and according to this theory, the existing stones would have formed an entrance to an inner chamber covered by a mound. However, others have hypothesized that what we see today could be more or less what it was intended to be. According to this theory, the stones were never meant to be buried and could have simply been a more elaborate version of a standing stone. Whatever its purpose and original design, it definitely stands out in the landscape. Number 8. Atlit Yam, Israel Not all of the world's greatest monuments are easy to visit, and Atlit Yam is definitely one of the hardest for both average archaeologists and tourists alike. Situated between 26 to 40 feet below sea level, the site is a Neolithic village which covers about 10 acres Located on the site is a megalithic stone semicircle that appears to have been arranged surrounding a freshwater spring, which some believe suggests it may have been associated to a water ritual. So how did it end up under the sea? Some of the archaeological evidence found during underwater excavations has led archaeologists to believe the site was suddenly abandoned. But why? Well, it definitely doesn't look like they voluntarily left it. Some believe it was due to a tsunami caused by the volcanic collapse of the eastern flank of Mount Etna around 8,500 years ago. Not only do they have to contend with a tsunami, but it's also possible that some other round structures on the site served as wells, which gradually became contaminated with seawater as sea levels rose at the end of the last ice age. So even without the tsunami, the site would have soon become uninhabitable anyway. Number 7. Carnic Stones, France Situated in and around the village of Carnic in Brittany, this site consists of rows upon rows of over 3,000 prehistoric standing stones. Yes, that's right, 3,000 of these massive blocks scatter the landscape. Archaeologists believe they were originally erected around 3300 BCE, however some of them might be even older, dating as early as 4500 BCE. Given their age, it's perhaps not surprising that only about 700 of them remain intact and standing. But what was their function? Well, they have been the subjects of many myths and legends as far back as the Roman times. An interest in the site intensified in the early 16th century when La Tour de Avergne attributed them to druidic gatherings. Since then, they have been interpreted as representing stars in the sky and, more recently, with having actual astronomical significance. Current theories suggest they may have possibly been used in an astronomical observatory. 
While we may never know what their original function was, one thing we can agree on is that they marked the landscape in a very significant way. Number 6. Newgrange, Ireland Situated in County Meath, Ireland, Newgrange was built during the Neolithic period around 3200 BCE, making it about 500 years older than the Great Pyramid of Giza over in Egypt. This monument is a circular mound containing inner stone chambers and passageways. The outside the mound is ringed by stone circles, and inside the mound, some of the chambers contain human bones and other artifacts that might have been grave goods or votive offerings. So what was the site used for? Well, as with many ancient sites, there has been much debate around its original function, and interpretations range from a religious site, a burial mound, or an astronomy center. However, given the human remains and possible votive offerings, many archaeologists consider it a burial and religious site. The most notable astronomical feature of the site is that the entrance aligns with the rising sun during the winter solstice, which causes sunlight to flood the inner chamber. This makes the site the oldest megalithic structure with clear archaeoastronomical significance in Europe. For unknown reasons, the site fell into disuse and remained sealed for several millennia. However, that did not stop people from talking about it, and it played an important role in Irish mythology and folklore, with some even believing it to be a place where the gods dwelled. Number 5. Mays Howe, Scotland Situated in Orkney, Scotland, this site consists of a Neolithic chambered cairn and passage grave. Dated around 2800 BCE, it is one of the largest tombs in Orkney. Likely used to bury the dead, it would have been an important structure during its use. Like many ancient sites, it has astronomical alignments with the back wall of the central chamber being illuminated on the winter solstice, similar to Newgrange. The entrance passage is about 36 feet long and leads to the central most chamber, which measures about 415 feet on each side. The mound that encases the structure reaches a height of about 24 feet and is covered with turf, making the whole structure look like a natural mound from a distance. But that didn't stop looters from finding it. Maze Howe is described in the Orkney Inga saga being looted by the famous Viking Earl Harold Matadarson in the 12th century CE. They even left inscriptions of the wall, proof that the Norsemen did indeed break into the site six centuries before it was first excavated. Number 4. Tiwanaku, Bolivia Situated in the Tiwanaku Municipality, Bolivia, Tiwanaku is an ancient city near the southeastern shore of Lake Titicaca. Honestly, I didn't even realize a place called Titicaca really existed. Anyway, this site has many notable megalithic structures, like the Gate of the Moon and the Gateway of the Sun, which have left archaeologists and visitors amazed at the clear demonstration of stone-cutting skills. This site could have been inhabited as early as 1500 BCE, however, it was not until between 300 BCE and 300 CE that the area is thought to have been a cosmological center for the Tiwanaku Empire. As with many of these ancient sites, archaeologists debate the original function of the site and believe it likely had different functions at different times during its history. Unfortunately, unlike some of the great discoveries that had remained buried for centuries and were found relatively intact, Tiwanaku has fallen victim to looting and amateur archaeological investigation centuries before it was excavated. This has resulted in many of the artifacts being removed from the site, leaving today's archaeologists the challenge of piecing the picture together without all of the pieces. Number 3. Napta Playa, Egypt Located about 62 miles to the west of the Nile, Nabta Playa is today situated in the inhospitable desert of southern Egypt, an unlikely site for an ancient megalithic structure. However, human occupation of the site dates back to the 10th and 8th millennium BCE, when the area received more rainfall and contained more reliable sources of water, like a lake, which might explain why people were originally drawn to that area. In the following millennia, larger communities formed in the area, and by the 7th millennium BCE, its inhabitants had to rely on deep wells for water sources. Consisting of a number of alignments of sandstone slabs and stone circles, the UNESCO World Heritage Convention found this site to contain hypothetical solar and stellar alignments. 
while others have stated that it contains the earliest archaeoastronomical device in the world. Although there has been much debate around the period in which these astronomical alignments were created, the general archaeological consensus is that they date to the 5th millennium. A recent investigation has found a possible alignment with many stars and constellations, such as Sirius, the Belt of Orion, and more. Number 2. Mycenae, Greece Situated about 31 miles southwest of Athens, Mycenae was once the capital of a state that dominated much of the eastern Mediterranean world during a time known as the Mycenaean period. According to Greek author Homer, the site was home to Agamemnon. You knew him as the king who led the Greeks in the war against the Trojans to retrieve his brother's wife, Helen, who is best known as Helen of Troy. This association between Mycenae and Agamemnon even led Frank Schleiman, the archaeologist who found and excavated the site, to believe he had gazed upon the face of Agamemnon after finding a skull under a gold death mask in one of the tombs. Although the site was inhabited since the early Neolithic period, it was during the Late Bronze Age that it was developed into a significant fortified settlement. Domestic dwellings, temples, graves, tombs, and massive fortified walls. This site had it all. At its peak, in about 1350 BCE, it's possible that the citadel and lower town had a population of around 30,000 citizens and covered roughly 79 acres. At this time, the defensive walls and other structures were rebuilt in a style known as Cyclopean. Named as such because later Greeks believed that the blocks had to have been moved by the mythological Cyclops, the big one-eyed monsters. But really, who else could have moved and lifted blocks that weighed over 20 tons? Number 1. Hagar Kim, Malta Situated on the island of Malta in the Mediterranean, this site dates to the Gontesia phases between 3600 and 3200 BCE. The site is a megalithic temple complex which contains a main temple and three additional structures. Unfortunately, the material that they used, limestone, is not the most durable, and as a result the temple has suffered severe weathering. Nevertheless, it is still a magnificent building to visit. So what was it used for? Well, due to the lack of human bones, but an apparent abundance of animal bones, Archaeologists are of the opinion that the site was for ritualistic purposes that involved animal sacrifices. One of the most notable aspects of its architecture is that the facade contains the largest stones used in Maltese megalithic architecture, weighing 57 tons. To put that into perspective, an adult male African elephant can weigh up to 7 tons, which begs the question. How on earth did they move these massive blocks, let alone put them in place? A question that seems to pop up every time we encounter megalithic structures. But we know this for sure. Like all the megalithic structures around the world, this one dominates the landscape it's set in. What are some massive structures on this planet you can think of? Tell us down in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that good old subscribe button. Enjoy!